As the battle between good and evil raged on within the home, a tragic event was about to unfold, one that would lead to an unprecedented legal defense. On a fateful February night, tensions boiled over. An argument ensued, and in the midst of the chaos, in a fit of rage, a knife was pulled out. In a sudden and violent attack, the suspect lunged at the victim, stabbing him multiple times. The knife struck repeatedly with wounds to the victim's chest and stomach. The attack was brutal and relentless, with the suspect reportedly growling and behaving in a manner that seemed beyond his control. As the victim collapsed to the floor, the suspect fled the scene, leaving behind a trail of blood and horror. The victim was rushed to the hospital, but the injuries were too severe. He was pronounced dead shortly after arriving, so in the heat of the moment, a life was taken. The suspect claimed they were not in control of their actions, that something else had taken hold of them. In the aftermath, the town was left reeling. In February of 1981, a peaceful community was rocked by an event that would forever change their perception of reality. It all began with a seemingly ordinary family living in the quiet town of Brookfield, Connecticut. At the heart of this tale is a family, much like any other. They went about their daily lives unaware that something sinister was creeping into their world. It started with strange noises, whispers in the night and shadows that moved where they shouldn't. Our story involves a young boy, tormented by forces beyond our comprehension. His family, desperate for answers, turned to the church for help, seeking an exorcism to rid their son of the evil that had taken hold. Enter Ed and Lorraine Warren, renowned paranormal investigators, known for their encounters with the dark and the demonic. The Warrens took on the case, documenting the terrifying events that unfolded. What they witnessed in that house was beyond anything they had seen before. The malevolent presence was strong. It was dangerous. The Warrens' diaries detailed the horrors. Furniture moving on its own, guttural voices echoing through the halls, and a young boy speaking in tongues. They felt a presence in that house, a darkness that wanted to destroy anyone who stood in its way. This is a story that blurs the lines between the natural and the supernatural. A tale so chilling that it shook a small town to its core and made legal history. This is the story of a crime where the line between innocence and evil is shrouded in darkness. Stay with us as we unravel the mystery of the devil made me do it. The suspect was finally arrested and the trial began. It was during this trial that the defense would introduce a plea never before heard in a US courtroom, not guilty by reason of demonic possession. The defense argued that the accused had been under the control of a demonic force, a claim supported by the testimony of the Warrens and the documented evidence of the paranormal occurrences. The trial captivated the nation, raising questions about the nature of evil, free will, and the unseen forces that may influence our lives. As the trial progressed, the jury was presented with the chilling details of the exorcism, the torment of the young boy, and the events leading up to that fatal night. After weeks of testimony, the jury reached a verdict. The nation held its breath as the foreman stood to deliver the outcome. In the end, the jury found the accused guilty of manslaughter, rejecting the unprecedented defense of demonic possession. The case, however, left an indelible mark on the legal system and the collective consciousness of the nation. And now, dear viewers, the moment you've been waiting for, the identities of those at the heart of this dark tale. The accused was a young man named Arne Cheyenne Johnson. And the victim, tragically, was the landlord, Alan Bono. This case, known as The Devil Made Me Do It, remains a haunting reminder of the mysteries that lurk in the shadows and the lengths to which people will go to explain the unexplainable. Thank you for joining us on this journey into the unknown, and until next time, stay curious, stay brave, stay haunted.